আসসালামু আলাইকুম সুপ্রিয় দর্শকদের মধ্যে অনেক শুভেচ্ছা আজকের প্রোগ্রাম পলিটিক্স এন্ড বিয়ন্ডে আছি আমি এস এম আজম আপনারা আমাদের এই প্রোগ্রামে আসলে আমরা পলিটিক্স পলিসি নিয়ে কথা বলি থেকে সেই সাথে আমাদের লোকাল এবং ন্যাশনাল পলিটিশিয়ানদের নিয়ে আসি সেই সাথে আমাদের লোকাল রেজিডেন্টদের নিয়ে আসি তারা তাদের অভিমত জানান আর আগামী ইলেকশনে আমরা এবার দুজন গেস্টকে এনেছি আপনারা জানেন ইলেকশন আসতেছে সেটাকে লক্ষ্য করে দুজন গেস্ট নিয়ে আসতেছি তারা আসলে বতব দেমার সিটিং কাউন্সিলর আর আজকের আমাদের যে প্রোগ্রামটা এখানে হয়তো বাংলা ইংলিশ মিলিয়ে করতে হবে কারণ আমাদের যে গেস্ট আছেন ওনারা হয়তো ইংরেজি তুই বলবেন বাংলাটা আমাদের তো জানে না অবশ্যই সেটাকে লক্ষ্য রেখে আপনারা একটু মাইন্ড করবেন যে বাংলা ইংলিশ মিলিয়ে হবে তো ইফ আই ইন্ট্রোডিউস আওয়ার ফার্স্ট গেস্ট অ্যাকচুয়ালি ফ্রম লেফট হ্যান্ড সাইড এজ এ ক্রিচ চ্যাপম্যান হি ইজ এ কাউন্সিলর ইন লন্ডন বড় অফ টাওয়ার হ্যামলার and at the same time he is a deputy leader of conservative group uh, thank you very much uh, chris to come here how are you today i'm very well indeed um nice to be here thanks for having me on okay thank you very much and immediate uh, um, my right side actually uh, he is a sitting councillor as well uh, councillor simon marcus and another thing he he ran for uh, election in 2010 i believe in barking area and he is now prospective parliamentary candidate in kilburn and hampstead Uh, Simon Marcus, thank you very much to come here. How are you today? Well, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm delighted to be here and okay. looking forward to the show. Okay, thank you very much. Shupriya Doshak, you know, we have a quiz for our program. We have a quiz for the first quiz. We have a quiz for the first quiz. We have a quiz for the first quiz. We have a quiz for the If I request Chris, uh, as you know, we actually in every week we do a quiz. And if you can uh, declare the winner name of uh, the last week quiz that sure. would be very much appreciated please. we're going to draw okay. from um, yeah. uh, it's a lucky part okay magic. Yeah. right um there we are good wiggle around okay you just want me to read out the winner um so uh, the winner is from all gate and i've got sumia okay. is the winner thank you very much sumia uh, thank you very much for your contribution you have given your opinion আর আপনার যে অভিমত দিয়েছেন ইমেল করেছেন সেটাকে দেওয়ার সেটা আমাদেরকে অনুপ্রাণিত করবে আমাদের প্রোগ্রামের আর আপনার পুরস্কে যথাসময়ে পৌঁছে যাবে গত সপ্তাহে যে কুইজটা ছিল আসলে সেটা হলো আন্ডার হুইচ পিএম বাংলাদেশ ওয়াজ ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্ট তখন ছিল আসলে টেড হিত টেড হিত ছিলেন আসলে তখন ব্রিটিশ প্রাইম মিনিস্টার আর দিস উইক উইল হ্যাভ এ দ্য সেম কুইজ অ্যাকচুয়ালি ইস ওয়াল আই ফুট এ কুইজ অ্যাকচুয়ালি ডেলিভারেটলি দ্য কুইজ উইল বি হু ইজ দ্য প্রেসিডেন্ট অফ আফগানিস্তান রাইট নাও Uh, as you know just uh, yesterday actually british uh, after 13 years of fighting and and agony we just came from uh, afghanistan and i think you will uh, you will in- enjoy today's topics as well we will bring it here uh, there is three answer uh, habit karzai abdullah abdullah and ashraf ghani apra apnader uttor padhate parben there is a email address uh, pnb@channelaeurope.tv now uh, if i request actually Chris, uh, obviously it's our uh, quiz, uh, quiz is done and, and uh, we'll get updates from the uh, viewers. Uh, this is a political opinion actually, this segment. Mm. What is f- any, any news or any political event, incident that bring your attention last week or last sure. two weeks? Uh, if you can share with our viewers, please. Well, I think, um, you know, clearly following on from your quiz, we can't miss um, our... Uh, exit from Afghanistan after over a, a decade's deployment um, in that country and I think you know quite clearly there's been a lot of discussion on how successful the deployment was um, my view is that it has been um, very successful um, if you actually look at uh, the infrastructure in the country now since we've moved out you've got new road infrastructure you've got new schools you've got thousands of children um, attending those schools Um, you have the Taliban whilst still being present in the country and you know nobody's going to suggest that it was um, you know a victory that has led to their their total removal um, they are you know a shadow shadow of their former selves and if you look at you know why did we why did we enter into this conflict after 9/11 what were our objectives um, I feel that on on many of the levels if you look at you know infrastructure democracy supporting the um, Uh, formation of a democratic state which has just had recent elections um, quite clearly there have been successes there um, I think my view and and I think it's a view that quite a few people have perhaps expressed is that not always was the mission completely clear and and not always was our objective But one thing I, I really need to mention as you said it's democracy actually is it a uh, is it this very expensive democracy where uh, we had to sacrifice 400 
53 mm -hmm. British soldiers, uh, men and women, and at the same time we had to spend 40 billion pounds in, during this time. Yeah. And um, obviously the country was facing is all of the economic uh, turmoil, it's not only this country, all over the world. Mm -hmm. So in this circumstances, actually how much it is uh, as productive or how much successful you think? And at the same time, as you know, uh, uh, ex-Defense uh, uh, Secretary, even John Reid, he, he, he said uh, when he gone to work, so he was telling himself, there's going to be only one billion cost for three years, but unfortunately that's last it's 13 years. And as uh, even also you mentioned, they say local infrastructure, education, health situation, I don't think it's, 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 it's meeting any standard. Mm. So, Well, I think there's a number of points there. I think um, absolutely that, you know, the human cost is um, something that we, we all acknowledge, um, you know, we've had servicemen and women putting their lives on the line in Afghanistan now for over a decade. Um, it's saddening to lose one um, member of our armed forces, let alone over 400, but I think they were very aware of the reason that they were there, and I think the British public were very aware of the reason that they were there as well. And, you know, you're saying that perhaps some of the infrastructure that I mentioned a moment ago isn't quite up to the standard we would hope. Sure, we do need to do more, and we will continue post-deployment to support. And we have left some personnel on the ground to do just that, to help train the Afghan army up to secure these areas so that the infrastructure and so that the education and health care can continue but, but to be that's, delivered. That's, that's quite fine, but, but remember, this country actually, they need to change by themselves. No, say, 13 years, hundreds of thousands of soldiers was from NATO and all of this country. They couldn't bring change. And and end is, is, is huge corruption. Mm -hmm. Election, I think this is the only country in the planet so far I know. They got the CEO of the country. I learned my whole life, CEO could be the company, but as I can see, the CEO is the country. And the same time, president. And this president is a puppet president, actually. Um, it, it, it is an odd governing structure, but I think that it was um, reached in the interests of uh, bringing together two quite differing parties in terms of how they should move forwards in terms of government, um, and some compromises had to be made. And I think that they both actually realised that in the national interest, it's much better if they try and work collaboratively than, than if they continue to try and... I'll, 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 I'll come back to you. This is the success and the failure of this uh, Afghan uh, deployment. And if I go to Simon, uh, thank you very much, all the way uh, from Kilburn, and you came here, we're really, really delighted. Uh, if you can share your, any political opinion or uh, this event, incident, or anything that our uh, viewers can enjoy. Well, uh, an event that, that your viewers may have been aware of in the last week is the argument over the 1.6 billion extra that this country has been charged by the EU. And now, my view on this is actually that the Prime Minister is showing strong leadership uh, on a number of levels. Firstly, you can't turn around to someone and say, well, actually, I your, need money, your bill has money. increased. Pay yeah. up. Uh, there needs to be procedure. There needs to be warning a lot further down the line, not just a week or, yeah, it's or even less. A week actually before, uh, but actually, I object to it, and I think the Prime Minister is showing leadership on another level, and that is we are now leading Europe in the recovery. In fact, much of Europe is still in recession. It could be a good sign because of the, that's the reason I think they are advertising abso abso that. Absolutely, that's what they claim. But when you're actually penalising a country for making tough decisions, having the right policies, for example, much of Europe still has 50% youth unemployment. Mm -hmm. One or two countries are technically in recession. It France is. is having immense difficulties. And when Europe says, look, there's one country that's leading the way in the recovery in this part of the world. They've made the tough decisions, and now we're going to penalize them. What does that say about their approach to the governance well, of this Well, this is region. their language. So they, are, they are not talking as penalized. They are expecting as you bring and the good condition is better than other, uh, other partners. So they are asking uh, extra money from uh, UK. And the situation is came now. I, th I don't think David Cameron, he can uh, get rid of this. As you know, says we are the, the part of treaty and all of the agreement we made. And well, he, he said that, that he's not going to pay. <laughs> so I, I'm more than happy to leave that decision with him and support him in that. Yeah, but, but I, I think what I'd like to see in Europe is more reform. Now, I, I spent nearly five years working in Brussels with the British Chamber of Commerce. All right. And what I heard from many of the European commissioners and director generals, the people that run Europe, people that make the decisions, they talked about changing, about uh, liberalizing their economy, you know, better working in employment regulation, perhaps reforming the European social model. If you can't, you know, you can't spend what you haven't got. And we see many European countries spend 
billions and billions on welfare systems that often don't work, making it very hard for entrepreneurs and small businesses to actually start and improve and expand and make money. So what we have in Europe is, a, is a, an economy that is no longer growing. What I believe is that we should help Europe reform so Europe can start growing, start increasing their levels of employment, become a more dynamic, growing part of the world. I think your explanation, I can see, is a business point of view. But if you see the political point of view, as even in a local, uh, if you see in a British, uh, British politics here, uh, so far uh, we learned from uh, Prime Minister his, uh, his, his extreme uh, opponent, of, I mean, his voice against this uh, penalizing, as you mentioned. But uh, we did not listen much about from other parties, actually how they will react or how, how they will support this. Uh, so do you have any opinion with other, other parties? And, uh, in, in terms of the, the, the yeah. opposing parties in this country? Yeah. Well, I think it, it may put them in a difficult position because the Prime Minister is firstly doing what's right for the country. In my view, as I've said, he's doing what's right for the EU. The EU needs to reform from within. And he's actually responding to public opinion. But so the, the other parties are in a difficult position. So. My view is they should support him in that. Now, I haven't heard any statements, as, as you've said. Yes, yes, yes. So we, we wait. But I think they'll be very cautious when, when uh, you know, the Prime Minister is doing the right thing in the right way. I yeah. think it's a very dangerous move to come out and criticise him. So, Simon, we've got a live call, actually, if you allow me to. Yes. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, caller. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, Azam Bhai. Uh, Bala Asai. Bala Asai. Bala I am joined by Jiwai. I am a Hamster constituency. I am a 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 I am a Thank you, General Bhai Karan. Um, thank you very much for your opinion. Obviously, it's a democratic right to express your opinion. Obviously, there is a tulip city. She is not here. So, uh, I cannot comment on her background and whatever happened. Uh, definitely, I will pass your message to Simon. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, definitely, we, you will uh, come back to us maybe in the future. Uh, Simon, that is a, it's a, well, it's a good thing. As, uh, from your area, actually, one of the voters, actually, he is a labor supporter. And uh, maybe he's going to support you, actually, for, uh, some, um, to, for some reason he, uh, he was telling about uh, other candidates. So obviously, I cannot uh, talk on behalf of them, and, and she's not here. So uh, obviously, this is, this is, this, touch, yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. And, and thank you, Vaizan. And if you want to uh, get contact, Simon said uh, maybe you will be able to speak to him. Yes, yeah, Simon, as, as, as you were telling, actually, uh, the European issues, that is uh, obviously is a political thing. Is it, but lots of critics are telling, actually, David Cameron is thinking other way because there is a by-election on the way actually next month and and you just want to, to save your skin from these uh, people opinion and that time is actually first of December and the election I think is 20th, 20th of November, 20th yeah, yeah. Of November. so it is a sort of playing game and uh, after November you will say oh yes I can't do anything this is a EU policy and as no one can change it and he says we are bound to uh, follow the treaty and it just uh, he's playing with po uh, people's opinion how do you how do you respond there uh, well actually th this event has been used by our opponents against us so we would say well it's very convenient for us with a by-election coming up I have to take note that the Prime Minister has actually been criticized certainly by UKIP and Nigel Farage 
that we're in this European club and there's nothing the Prime Minister can do about it and we'll eventually have to pay. So it has been turned against us for this by-election. But again, it comes down to the, to the reality that the Prime Minister has stood up, he's leading, and I have every faith that he'll make the decision. Yeah, that's that fine. Now, what I'm trying to make you understand is people are thinking this is just political statement. He cannot do anything. What do you think, end of the day, I mean, 1st of December? Will you well, pay I your uh, penalty? Have, I think so far, if I'm not wrong, I think it's £2 million pound per day so far, I believe. And um, Well, that, that is a decision for the Prime Minister. But I will say that if we look at various different European countries, they opt out of lots of legislation. The Schengen okay. Agreement, Belgium, Germany, mm -hmm. they all had their adjustments sooner than we did, some later. So again, so, but what we see is European countries opt out of certain agreements at certain times. So, for example, some countries have actually not a, a obeyed the European Court of Human Rights rulings. And, well, and, and, uh, and what were the punishments? You know, the Commission Some countries which have not observed EU law, yeah. in fact, they, they've not been punished, that the matter has sort of subsided and life has gone on. So I actually think the Prime Minister has made this statement, you know, he's showing strong leadership, and I think what we'll find is he follows up. But there is a, there is a strong view from uh, Germany and, 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 and France, as you know, they are the leader of the European Union, actually. They are the playing all of the game, as, as everybody knows. And they said it's, it's not like when um, Prime Minister earlier, he was talking about this referendum and all of this thing, and it's not like just uh, pick up something, cherry pick which one you like. It's not, it, it doesn't work like this. Well, so, as, as I say, there, there is strong evidence to suggest that a number of European country, countries do cherry-pick the rules. Now, it so happens on this occasion... That means weakness the of... Sorry? There is weakness of, uh, say, so it's, it's rules and regulation and, and... Well, you could argue it's the weakness of European government, but, but, but that, you know, is arguably uh, some of the problems you face when you bring so many countries together under a currency the euro, yeah. but without political union first, without full political union first. You're going to have All different right. speeds. And as we see, some countries, tragically like Italy, like Spain, have nearly 50% youth unemployment because yes, different yeah, countries have different needs in different ways. As I say, these countries don't always follow the rules of the EU either. All right. That so there's one occasion where I think we're standing up and... Clear. Yeah, that's the rules that could be changed. All right. Uh, 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 Mr. Chris, uh, what is your opinion? Do you have any thoughts about the European issues? Well, uh, you know, not surprisingly, I fully agree with what Simon has said there. Um, I think it sends a very strong message to people, which is that this is a, uh, eff effectively a tax on success. It's a tax on prosperity. And I think it sends a very dangerous message that you know, if, as a nation, you uh, manage your economy sensibly, um, you're, you're not um, in need of a bailout from a, from a central European Somewhere. source and actually will come back um, and then demand a lot more money from you later on. So it's a sort of lose-lose um, <laughs> scenario. And I, and, I, and I think that um, Prime Minister is not using it politically in the slightest. Um, the, you mentioned the by-election. I think it's very important that we reiterate to people during this by-election campaign that their frustration with the European Union, their desire to see it reformed, can only be delivered by the Conservative Party at the next election. Um, we are the only party offering them the choice of All a right. referendum in 2017. And I think All it's right. very important that Thank we Thank you, that we Chris. Actually, if I don't have sufficient time for this segment. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Chris and uh, Simon. You have given your valuable opinion. And definitely, voters will decide what to do or not to do. Shukriya Doshak, Aparam Ramdesh Hadathakan. We will come back after a very short break. Assalamu alaikum, Shukri Doshak, Abadani Dhanabad, Amade Shari Thakar Janna, our program, our segment, our segment is on the party promises and policies for 2015 general election. Our general election, Ashole Eshidatse, Shigdoi, Shokal politician, Abadakas Ashbe, Tadir Putu Janna, 
তো আপনাদের রাইট টাইম এখন চিন্তা ভাবনা করে ভোট দেওয়া আর এই সেগমেন্ট শো করার আগে আমি আপনাদের আবার স্মরণ করে দিতে চাচ্ছি এই সপ্তাহের যে কুইজটা ছিল সেটা হলো হু ইজ দ্য প্রেসিডেন্ট অফ আফগানিস্তান রাইট নাও ইজ ইট মিস্টার হামিদ কারজাই আবদুল্লাহ আবদুল্লাহ আর আশরাফ ঘানি ইউ ক্যান সেন্ড ইউর অ্যান্সার বাই আওয়ার স্ক্রলিং স্ক্রল ইউ ক্যান সি ইমেল অ্যাড্রেস পি এন বি অ্যাট চ্যানেল আই ইউরোপ ডট টিভি ইফ আই উড লাইক টু আস্ক ফ্রম সাইমন অ্যাকচুয়ালি অ্যাজ ইউ নো ইটস ওয়াল দিস ইজ দিস ইজ দ্য সেকেন্ড সেগমেন্ট দিস সেগমেন্ট ইজ এ ফার্টি ফ্রমিস অ্যান্ড পলিসিজ As you know, Prime Minister was telling in his uh, conference uh, uh, that's called everybody is proud to call home the whole United Kingdom. He was uh, giving hope and all of the aspiration. He said, yeah, I understand the people's uh, uh, expectations and he wants to declare this is a, is a pride home. At the same time, a labor leader, he was talking uh, to, uh, this is a famously uh, Joseph Hoyne and Zemara's uh, uh, struggling life story, how they are leading their life right now. hundreds of young kids they cannot go to school they cannot go to university so if 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 i consider all of this the same time other party leader they were talking about this uh, country economy some leaders they forget to talk about economy totally so is it is is it is, is a public question actually who is the right captain to deal economy this chaos is sitting last for well, that five five there, that's a, a very simple answer to that question and Yeah, the British public answered again clearly and clearly more clearly in the opinion polls and that's David Cameron. He's the most popular leader. He's trusted with the economy. The Conservative Party is trusted with the economy. And I think that becomes clearer and clearer every day as we, as we continue to emerge from recession and lead the way to recovery. I'm sure you'll defend your uh, party leader and as, as your candidate, but there is lots of people uh, in on the street. As I said, uh, Mr. Miliband, he was talking about Joseph Fine and ZMR's life story. People are struggling with their daily life. Living standard has gone high, really high. People are earning very less amount of money, zero hours contract. Th then uh, university tuition fees goes high. I s like lots of uh, middle class family, mm, uh, they cannot send their kids to the university. Absolutely, yeah. So how do you I defend mean, I mean, this? First of all, just Before Queen, sorry Simon, I know sir, uh, <laughs> there is a call actually right now sir, uh, uh, from caller and then you can give an answer please. Assalamu uh, alaikum uh, caller. Assalamu alaikum, uh, my name is Sharif, I'm from Kilburn. I'll uh, ask a question to Simon. Hi Simon. Hi. Hi, my name is Sharif, I'm from Kilburn. I know you but you don't know me. So my question is, uh, Uh, let me make it clear first that I'm a labor. Uh, I see that, M that Bo has proposed that the minimum wage is going to be raised up to eight pounds. So why should I vote for you when my party is raising the minimum wage up to eight, eight, eight pounds and your party has no agenda on that? Can you explain to me, please? Well, Shariq, that, that's a Thank very good question. Thank you very question. much. It's a very good question, actually. Uh, please, Simon. Absolutely. Well, first of all, it's about the detail. That minimum wage is going to be raised by 2020 to eight pounds. We will be doing exactly the same thing because that rise will be in line with inflation and growth. So really, he's saying nothing to you that we won't do. Now, I myself have supported a rise of the minimum wage to the national living wage, certainly in London, of £8.80. And I'm campaigning for that. I'm fighting hard for that within my party. And I can tell you I'm getting a lot of sympathy. And the Pay Commission has reported and, a min and the minimum wage will be increased very shortly. And uh, as you will find, the next Parliament, it will move towards that £8 an hour mark. And you might even find if the economy keeps picking up, we might get there before 2020, which was Ed Ball's pledge. So we might beat him to it a little bit earlier. And if we do, it will be because the economy keeps growing under the Conservatives. So if I ask you, in the relating of this question, actually, what is the, what's the biggest difference as, 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 as Labour Party, actually, he's a Labour supporter, he wanted to... know from you clearly that's eight pound will go minimum wages same time same time is the prime minister your leader he promises actually is a minimum of is a cash uh, tax-free income that's a twelve thousand five hundred pound what is the difference between these two figures well the twelve thousand five hundred pounds is what the tax threshold will be raised to, raised to so you won't start paying tax until it gets to twelve thousand five hundred pounds so where is the better of actually Do you think it, it depends what, you, what your hours are and how much you earn. Yeah, if you what I can tell you is that yeah. Yeah. what's very important for me and I think for our party is that people trying to make their way, people on the minimum wage, people starting out, should get the best start possible. And by raising the tax threshold to 12,500, 
we think that is the best way to do it. Do you think people will be more benefited if wages goes to eight pound or minimum as, as a tax free income is twelve thousand five hundred pound? So which one is is good for for the ordinary people? Good well, one is they're good both. for. They're, they're both, and in the next parliament, they're, they're both. So going to why happen. people will vote for you? Well, I hope they will. No. I think the prime minister has made it clear that, that th this is the offer on the table. But I think what's so important to say, just Tyreek, and all your viewers, is that you can't fulfil these offers unless the economy is growing, the tax base is growing, and we have the money to pay for it. Yes, sir. Uh, at, at the moment, as I keep saying, we are leading the advanced economies in the recovery. We have record employment levels. Our business growth, again, is leading Europe and many of the advanced economies. And I believe, and I hope I can convince Shari, that only with our party are we going to get the growth, get the businesses, get the tax base and the money coming in to pay for these things. So, Simon and, and uh, Chris, as well, we've got one more call, actually. It's the caller, Slamikum. Hello? Slamikum? Hello? Hello? Yes, your question, please. Your name, please. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yes. Yes, uh, yes my, my name is Samir. I'm calling from Manchester. All right. Uh, I'm a Labour supporter, and my question is, yeah, why, why is there so much unemployment in your, in your government? Because before, when it was, it was Labour's government, it wasn't too much unemployment. And what is the purpose for the, for the European Union at all that? Because the European labourers are coming down here and they are get, doing the jobs for cheaper. I mean, the British workers, what we used to get for that, now we're not getting the jobs because people are uh, employing the cheap workers. And what it is doing to the country, lots of, lots of climate, uh, you know, climate, because uh, spread the crime too much. And um, you can see, I mean, too much prostitution and everything. And, you know, uh, I don't get what, what is the purpose, basically. I mean, they are taking that money. They are coming from there to here. They are taking our money back to their countries. And our economy is going down. All right. So that's, 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 so the main problem is you were talking about EU immigration or... So far, I can understand your point, actually. There's a lot of EU migrants coming to this country and, uh, and, and, and taking our jobs. That's the question, isn't it? Yeah, that's the question. Okay. That, it, it, it has, I, I would say, it has caused too much unemployment as well. Okay, that's fine. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if I ask, uh, uh, thank you, thanks a lot for your question. Obviously, I will ask to the panel, they will give an answer. Chris, if I ask you this, obviously, you learned uh, uh, there's a uh, caller. He was talking about this EU people are coming and they're seizing their job and, and, and a huge number of unemployment situation right now. Though government yeah. is claiming we well, made uh, millions of jobs here, but well, reality is different. You know, firstly, um, un unemployment is, is very much down um, compared on, on what we inherited from the previous government. You've got more people in full time work. You've got uh, more people taking advantage of the apprenticeship program, about 1.8 million. So um, there's been actually some very positive steps in terms of employment. In terms of um, EU migration, I think that you know, the Prime Minister has indicated that we are, are absolutely willing to look at this topic, but at the same time, I think you do have to be realistic about our membership of the European Union. We, we are signed up as a member, and we are aware that the freedom of movement rules apply. Um, we have very many citizens who decide to relocate within the European Union and take jobs and, and, and contribute in, in other economies just as people come into ours. But I do very much understand people's frustration um, with the idea that we are perhaps seen as maybe a soft touch. Um, you know, there's been a lot of publicity around um, issues such as benefit tourism, people coming who don't necessarily wish to contribute to the economy but are here um, to try and maximise the use of uh, the welfare state. But I think the vast majority of people, certainly in my ward, um, are here to, to work, are here to um, raise families, are here to contribute to society. So I, I don't think it, it's necessarily fair to generalise. Um, whilst there are certainly areas that we can improve upon, I think, you know, if you look at EU uh, membership uh, uh, in its entirety, it is by far and away a positive thing. Um, for the United but Kingdom. one thing is clearly is, is a clear frustration um, across the community and the people, it's ordinary people actually. I think they are thinking uh, as, 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 as immigration matter involves the like EU. It says non-EU immigration is not a problem. Now problem is actually EU immigration. 
And at the same time, obviously, Prime Minister, your uh, party leader, he, right. he offered a referendum for uh, 2017. That's right. 2017. <coughs> so in this referendum, actually, what he means, but one thing is, he is not clear what he is talking, actually. Well, I, well, 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 I think, I think um, he has indicated that we are willing to consider me measures and mechanisms that would work. But um, under the current framework and rules, yeah. it is extremely difficult, nigh on impossible, to actually have any impact on the freedom of movement. We are signed up to that provision of EU law. Um, we are, however, um, we have it expressed that we're happy to consider ways in which perhaps um, we might be able to make a change, and that will be part of David Cameron's uh, renegotiation of powers ahead of the 2017 referendums. By the time we come to that point and people are given the choice, this is a number of areas that we will have lobbied very hard on um, to come, I think, to the best, um, but uh, best position for Britain. So um, absolutely, we acknowledge that there's an issue there, but people do have to understand that the, the huge economic benefit that, that we receive from the European Union, 54% of all goods that we export, of course, go to the EU. Um, Freedom of movement is one of the provisions that we, we do have but to But here is to. a tricky thing for the people of Britain, actually. They are confused still. Uh, Prime Minister, actually, what he is thinking. He never said in or out what his opinion. What he said, I will give a referendum. On the contrary, it's Labour leader, he said, no, we want to stay with the uh, EU. Lib Dem said they are happy to stay with the EU. But what yeah. will... I, I mean, you know, Labour and the Lib Dems are clearly not concerned with the democratic deficit that, uh, that exists within the European Union. Um, and, you know, traditionally they've been far happier with the political union that's come along with the European Union's with evolution. With state. Indeed. Uh, you know, the big, big Federalist fans, I'm sure. Um, but, but our view very much is that um, if we as councillors and, and as, as Simon as parliamentary candidate are going to be able to be in a position to represent people, um, some of the power that has gradually seeped away from the United Kingdom and from our own sovereign parliament has to be regained. Um, and I think that's absolutely what the Prime Minister is going to be doing between now and 2017. Yeah, sure, yeah, you can jump on, jump on. I think Chris is absolutely right. And, and just as important is the time people say we should have a referendum before the general election. Yeah. Some say we should have had a referendum two or three years ago. I think that wasn't the time. Mm. When Europe was in the depths of a, a recession, with civil disorder in the streets, you know, with, with serious <laughs> problems to deal with, that is not the time to have a referendum and for Britain well, that is it. to leave. So I think what the Prime Minister did was absolutely spot on. He's saying, we'll call a referendum in the next Parliament. That gives us time to listen to people, to renegotiate, be it on the immigration policy, on employment law, and a whole bunch of EU policies. policies. It'll be very clear, the negotiations will happen, so there'll be a clear set of issues to vote on, and then it will go. Sorry to interrupt you, Simon. So yes, I got a call and one more. Asalaamu As Alaikum, Kola. Asalaamu Alaikum, This is uh, Abdus Hamid from uh, Redbridge. Okay, thank you, uh, Hamid. Bhai. Uh, Abdus Bhai, how are you? Yeah, Alhamdulillah, not bad. Nisal? Yeah, Nisal, by the fantastic, way. brother. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to ask a question to um, uh, both uh, Simon Tanner, and yeah. your other guest as well, basically. Um, my, my question was, um, do you, with regard to the current uh, European Union bill that we, we're being asked to uh, foot in terms of 1.6 billion, um, what, what is Simon's view uh, uh, on that? Um, bearing in mind, you know, we're, we're being asked to pay that bill. What is, you know, should the Prime Minister uh, uh, pay or should he, Consequence. Uh, should he reject that particular bill in the strongest possible terms, bearing in mind that, you know, it, it just seems really, really unfair. All right. Okay. Well, no, my, that's, my my, that's my question to both Simon and... Uh, yeah. Know, uh, Thank you, uh, thank you, Abdus, brother. Uh, no. Definitely, uh, they will give their answer. Yeah, if you start, uh, Simon first. Thank you for that question, and I think we shouldn't pay it. And I think the Prime Minister is absolutely right. As, as I said earlier, I, I spent nearly five years working in Brussels, and what troubled me a great deal, and what, what might trouble you also, is there wasn't enough democracy. The European institutions are many and varied. You have the European Commission, the European Council, the Council of Ministers, and so on. And only the European Parliament can you actually vote for. And you can estimate that's maybe a quarter or a third of European government. So now, that's not good enough for me. And that might not be good enough for your viewers either. So, so for all, he's right then. Well, he has a point. 
Clearly. He has a valid point. Clearly. The, the, the British public have made, it, have made it very obvious. And All actually, right. if you look, again, you look at the opinion polls, there is a great deal of, of caution about Europe which is why I think we need to have a referendum. So do you think that will be a reflection on this by-election of Nigel Farage's views? With well, his views, of course. Look, we live in a democracy, and Nigel Farage has certainly made a lot of progress with his party. Um, we have to get our message across as well and say the only people you're going to get a referendum with is us. If you vote for UKIP, no matter what you think of Nigel Farage, no matter how well he's done, you will not get a referendum. But, but there will be consequences. I'm sure everybody will enjoy next month by election. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, Chris. Before coming, I got one more call. Asalaamu Alaikum, caller. Then I'll, I'll come back to you. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaamu Alaikum and good evening to your panelists. Good evening. Good evening. What is your question, brother? Uh, basically, I just, well, I'm a bit confused, uh, Mr. Cameron. Um, if he uh, becomes, if his Tory party is still in power uh, next election uh, in, in May 2016, he said he's going to give us the EU uh, risk referendum. Um, but I'm a bit confused on um, one minute he's saying that um, we need to get more power from from uh, e, 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 yeah, EU and then next minute he's saying um, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a referendum on the EU on 2016. 17. So I don't I mean they made the pledge but I don't know if they're gonna stick to it so I'm a bit confused on that and and um, the way our country is running at the moment uh, our country is overpopulated I personally I could see at the moment of probably over between 65 and 70 million uh, population. I could see that going in 30, 40 years down the line. I might not be too dead to see it. But it could, it could go to 100 million. Thank so you, Mike. Why they find out that more of what they see on the EU referendum? All right. Thank you very much uh, for your question. Uh, sorry, it's one more question, actually. We'll, 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 uh, it's EU. It's very interesting. Yeah. EU. Yeah. Assalamu Kola. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Hello, Assalamualaikum. I'd like to talk to you, Mr. Simon, please. Yes, you can, please. Thank please. you. Hello, Assalamualaikum. I'm from South Shields. I'll be here at the beginning. Yeah, he, he's listening to you, please, if you, if you can ask your question. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Simon. Yeah, we can hear you, yes. Hello, I hear you, I hear you. Yes, I've got a question, which is, at, at, Talking about the European Union, how, what's the benefit if we come out from the European Union? What's the benefit to the uh, uh, British people? Can you explain as much as possible, please? Yes. That's good. Thank that, you. That, that goes to the heart of the matter. And it's very important that people realise that Europe's share of the world economy is shrinking every year. Europe can no longer compete with India, with China, with Brazil and so many other growing nations. Why? Because they, ha they have the wrong economic ideas. They have too many regulations, so it's hard for businesses to start and to grow. It's hard for people to employ people in Europe. That's why you have such high levels of youth unemployment and unemployment. Businesses can't take people on, they're scared to. Employment law makes it very difficult for them to do that. So even though Europe has regulatory systems that damage business, they don't get enough money coming into their governments, yet they still keep spending money on, again, welfare systems that don't really work well enough. So this is why I think we need to go to the British people and have a referendum and say, do we want to stay part of an economic union that is getting smaller, that cannot compete, whose ideas do not work, or do we want to go beyond the horizon and trade with parts of the world that are growing? India, China, Brazil, and so many more. Invest in, in the future, look beyond the horizon. And I, I think, and I think lots of people in this country are confident enough to be able to look at both sides of the argument to make the right decision. But I think, above all, it's that the British people need to have a say. So whether they vote in or out, that question, that question over sovereignty, and that we can make the decision to stay in Europe 
or go beyond the horizon, look to the growing parts of the world. So That's a decision we yeah, simply Simon, have to have. Yeah. Yeah. Simon, one thing I found actually, he was asking sort of direct answer from you. Is it, is it, what is your personal opinion? Do you want a personal opinion? Yeah. I would like to stay in the EU, but if the Prime Minister is not able to renegotiate in the way that I would like, okay. then I, with great reluctance, would be forced to vote. That's to fine. Leave. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, Chris. Uh, definitely, I will come with you some question uh, uh, our uh, caller they asked for. So we got a time problem. The time is the biggest yeah. constraint. Thank you, Doshak. Apara, I'm not sure. Thank you. Apara, I'm not sure. Shoot to be ready for our video. This is our third segment. Assalamu alaikum, Shukriya Doshakar Padrona Dhanabad, Amra Amadir Birutil Porekhani Sigasi, third segment. Our segment, the Shurukaragi, our Shon Kurdijachi, Shopta Jekui, said, Who is the president of Afghanistan right now? Is it Mr. Hamid Karzai, Abdullah Abdullah, or Ashraf Ghani? You can send your answer uh, PNB at channel I Europe dot TV. Uh, this segment actually is a prospective parliamentary candidate 2015. As the new election is on the way, everybody is coming to your door and they will knock your door. Now it's your time to play and exercise your democratic rights. Uh, gentlemen, both of you actually, same party, both of you are councillor. You already uh, PPC, prospective parliamentary candidate. And Mr. Chris Chapman, I'm sure. Uh, you are on the way, is the aspirations. Maybe you will be uh, a PPC soon if your party selected you. I think this process is going as well. If I start you first, as, as you know, this is a Tower Hamlets. You are living in, in, in a borough where 34% people are from Bengali community. Mm. And they got their own idea, they got their own inspiration. What, as, as, as even a running councillor actually, at the same time a deputy leader of conservative group. Mm. So what source of idea or what do you know about British Bangladeshi people or their values, say aspirations, yeah. that they can feel you can reflect their aspirations? Sure. I mean, you know, as you said, I represent um, Blackhall and Cubitt Town in, in the London Borough of Town Hamlets. Um, it is a very diverse community. Um, I think one of the things that really struck me during the campaign over the last, well, six months before the elections in May is that, you know, many of the values that the Conservative Party um, holds dear and that we are um, talking to people on the doorstep resonated very strongly with many of the communities, particularly the Bangladeshi community, um, the idea of, you know, the importance of family, the family unit, um, the entrepreneurial spirit that we're very much trying to further at the moment, um, particularly local business. Um, you know, the, the idea of, of, of hard work and success and reward. And, and these were all ideas that um, I had many hours, luckily enough, to speak to people on the doorstep. So I think that um, the Conservative Party's core values resonate very strongly with, with many of the communities that, that um, uh, exist within my ward and, and, and very much particularly the Bangladesh. That's one. fine. As a person, Chris Chapman, how can you help them or how can you inspire mm -hmm. actually them as, as you said, all of the spirits and values. Sure. So um, uh, last night I held a community meeting in my ward for all of the residents to come together and discuss the threat of overdevelopment. One of the big issues that all parts of my community face at the moment is that we are receiving a disproportionate amount of construction development um, tower blocks. You know, it's going to have numbers um, one, two and three in terms of the highest residential buildings in the country are due to be constructed um, on the Isle of Dogs. My ward at the moment has 13,000 residents. By 2025, it is due to go up by an additional 20,000 residents. Wow. Um, we simply cannot sustain it. The infrastructure is not there to go with it. Um, people are waiting two weeks plus for a doctor's appointment. They're sending their children out of, well, off the island and sometimes indeed out of the borough to go to school. Um, the transport network is, is so um, seriously yes. overwhelmed and saturated that we've had 
Um, the emergency services actually expressed concern that they won't be able to access the island in case of emergencies, particularly ambulance and police. So, um, you know, how, how can I help? You know, I stood there last night in front of all these people and explained to them that we're in the process of forming a neighbourhood planning forum, which under the power of law will give local people direct control over the development of their community and it will allow them to push for um, more community services, more communal spaces, control over the type of development that we see and stipulations over what infrastructure comes with it. So um, and, and it had a fantastic response and that was from all members of the community yeah, last that's night. Yeah, that's a fantastic answer. Chris, uh, I, got a, I got a call from uh, uh, actually our caller viewer. Asalaamu Alaikum caller. Asalaamu Alaikum Salaam. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say it's fantastic to see uh, Chris, uh, someone, some, somebody from Tory party. Traditionally, I'm a Tory, I mean, I'm Bengali decent, uh, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a naturally a Tory supporter. Instead of coming up from coming up from Labour Party and your independent party, it, it, it's about time uh, Channel I got somebody from the Tory party. It's fantastic to see that. And and um, and now I think we need to move. To, uh, traditionally, the majority of Bengali voters is, is, is Labour Party, but young generation, third and fourth, fourth generation, majority of the business entrepreneurs, you see, majority of them support the uh, policies. You know? so it, 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 I like to say thank you very much for bringing somebody like Chris Chapman from from you know, um, East, East London. Usually, you, you, you guys generalize normally don't do that. So okay. it's nice, nice to see that, and I think we need to see the more, the more Tory uh, party leaders coming in, Chinala, uh, Ch you know. Yes. What's your name, brother? Sorry. Uh, my name is Jack. Jack, thank you very much for your uh, good opinion and and um, yeah, yeah, so that, I think that, that will inspire us to do more and more. I think and we need that more, that more Tory supporters in, in the studio in the future. They maybe they're coming to before the election. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Thank you very much for your opinion and 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 uh, thank you, Chris, as well. Uh, if I come to uh, Simon, actually, uh, you were sitting councillor. You ran in 2015. You, uh, sorry, sorry, oh, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's 2010 against uh, Nick Griffin. He was, uh, it was the biggest uh, achievement, I believe, in, in, in that time, in, in election time. And at the same time, you're running now in Kilburn and, and Hampstead. And you need only 42 votes to win this seat, as you know that. So, and your constituency, there are 1,500 to 2,000 Bengali people are living so far, uh, we got information. So how do you motivate, how do you engage this community with you and how they can feel as, yes, I can elect Mr. Simon and he can reflect, he can share our values or our thinking to the parliament? Well, I've met many people in the Bangladeshi community in Hampstead, in Kilburn and beyond, in Camden as well, as a councillor. And it does come down to values. And what's become clear to me over the years is that the Bangladeshi community and those from other communities watching your show tonight, we share the same values. Hard work, family, responsibility, the discipline and commitment and entrepreneurial spirit, the drive it takes to build a business up and create a community. And it seems to me, from the people I speak to where I live in, in Camden, that more and more people from minority groups, second, third generation immigrants, or first generation, are beginning to look at the Conservative Party and say, this is the party that's going to help me start a business, that's going to give me the opportunity. This is the party that's reforming the education system and the Bangladeshi community value education massively. I can yes, see it's the future. Is, is, is really Here's the party that's reforming cool it. Here's the party that's reforming the welfare system so that we can reduce our national debt and eventually reduce the taxes for people that work so hard in the businesses that they create. So I think it's that shared values. And over the years, people are beginning to say that we are the party that share your values and that understand what you're trying to achieve. Simon, one thing I said I really need to mention, because uh, I have seen your biography where you said... Uh, I'm not a professional politician. In fact, like many, I have lost trust in politics, and that is why I am standing for parliament. I would make a big promise because I am only one man and I can change the world. But the one promise I will make to fight for what is the right thing for the people of Hampstead and Kilburn. You mentioned actually as a, as a trust in politics, and I'm sure quite lots of people lost their trust. At the same time, our community people as well, they 
They think actually the Conservative Party is not the party for them. So I can see something as a whole political arena in, in the British system. You lost your faith, your personal faith, as you said. At the same time, say Bengali people, they said, well, this Conservative Party is not for us. So they talk for rich people. We are not that sort of rich. So how do you balance this, and what is your opinion with that? Well, this, this I've heard many times that the Conservative Party is, is the party of the rich, and that could not be more wrong. If you look at any community, any society throughout history, what has helped people go from being poor to being wealthy? Not necessarily rich, but well off, a strong community, a happy community, where people have jobs, they have dreams and hopes for the future. What takes people from that, from being poor to being wealthy or yes. better off? Again, it comes down to values. And the reason why I became very disillusioned with politics, and again, this lack of trust that people have, is because in the last decade, when the Labour Party were in power, I saw a party that did not reflect the values that create wealth and create healthy and happy communities. So I saw Simon, a party. Again, I need to interfere here. Actually, I got a call. Uh, uh, actually. Hello. Hello, caller. Hi, how are you? Hi, fine. Thank you very much. Who is speaking over there? Uh, uh, my name is Yamin Mahmoud Dipu. Okay. What is your question? Uh, uh, I'm happy to see, uh, happy to watching this program. All right. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm really like this program. Thank you very because, much. Uh, I can, I can, uh, I can know something. And uh, my, my point is, is this country, uh, is UK's parliamentary, parliamentary system, and there is a politician, politician system is so big different from Bangladesh. So if somebody, if somebody learn from here, and they can they can use this person or use uh, they can use some community in Bangladesh how to develop our political uh, political system or developing system. There is so many corruption in Bangladesh <laughs> in here as well. So we need to reduce how to reduce this thing. So how how we can develop from UK uh, this that, system? That's that's fine. Thank you very much, brother, for your uh, good concern in in back home. Maybe it's not the right. Uh, platform right now, actually, we can talk about the Bangladesh, we are talking about actually the British politics, that's good. Maybe in future we'll, uh, we'll have opportunity to talk about Bangladeshi and, and British politics, how it's going on. But I can ask you one thing, Simon, yeah, I can ask you one thing. Uh, I think uh, the caller was mentioning, because uh, as you know, you got, a, you got a, your candidate there from Labour Party, Tilip Siddiq, uh, Siddiqui, she, she got a background from uh, obviously the Bengali, uh, British Bangladeshi. So, and at the same time, another is called, uh, is gentleman is Majid Nawaz, is from Lib Dem as well. So there is a clear, uh, well, people are thinking is, is there are two candidates from BAME community and one as a, well, uh, well, personally I don't want to mention like this white and BAME, but obviously it's your white uh, background. So uh, people are thinking actually politics is, is as, as you mentioned, even British politics as well, you lost your uh, faith. The people are uh, thinking, well, uh, the couple of candidates from BAME community and you, how will you t defer your candidacy, actually? How will you make your area cleaner, safer, and, and good politics? Well, first of all, in terms of my opponents, uh, we are a very diverse community, and I think it's a very healthy and a very good thing that we have candidates representing everybody. Um, now, in terms of improving the area where I live, Again, it comes down to our party policies. People need jobs, they need more homes, they need to be safe, crime is going down. My area, particular uh, Hampstead Kilburn, has seen employment increase to almost record levels recently, because again, the economy is now growing again. So my job as a candidate, and if I have the honor to become the MP, is to work very hard locally, listen to people, and make sure the policies of government will help people where I live locally in Hampstead and Kilburn. And as a councillor, I'm, I'm already doing that. So we have a Chris talked about high-rise development. It's a big problem where I live in Hampstead and Kilburn as well. It's a conservation area, an area people visit, come to visit from all over the world. Hampstead Heath, it's very beautiful. And we don't want it ruined. Yeah, maybe so I, will, I, will, I, will, I will come back to you with this, this, this your local issues. As, as, as you said, uh, if you become MP, what are you going to do? 
if I ask Chris, uh, there are lots of people in the community actually, as, as they ask uh, lots of questions actually as a count, sitting councillor, at the same time you're a deputy leader of conservative groups. What is your main job? Because what's happened, in, in, especially in Bengali community, I have seen so many people, they say, there are lots of councillors actually. It's, they think this is their main job, as, as to become a councillor. <coughs> and they're not working for the people of actually community, people of, of their own constituency. So what do you do in your daily, daily job in, in a council? Yeah. So as the deputy leader of the Conservative group, I support Councillor Peter Golds, who's our uh, leader, and I'm sure many of your um, viewers have heard of him or have seen him on the television. Um, and our job really is to hold Mayor Lutfi Rahman, uh, his cabinet, and the Labour Party to account. Um, and we do that through a variety of means. Um, I think many people will have probably seen the Panorama documentary that was broadcast about our borough uh, earlier this year, and that raised a good deal um, of alarming questions, and currently there are a number of investigations. Indeed, at uh, the Conservative Party conference, I think many people will have noticed that Theresa May, uh, the Home Secretary, actually referenced uh, Mayor Lutfer's um, uh, administration as an area of deep concern. Um, and it has been certainly my job since being elected, and, and certainly um, a cause that Peter has, has spent many years um, fighting to actually ensure that these elected politicians are behaving in a transparent manner, that they are democratically accountable to the people that have put them there, and that most importantly, that taxpayers' money is being used fairly and appropriately. And we have seen multiple misappropriations of public funds. Um, we have seen public buildings sold off for perhaps a fraction of their commercial value and then um, further sales down the line that have caused um, great, great concern. Um, so, so quite cl clearly, it is our role to hold them to account. Um, and it's my job. And definitely, people will uh, people will justify obviously as you mentioned your concern. Uh, so, if I ask you one more thing, actually, as as your councillor, sitting councillor now, mm. and if I am not wrong, I think you you are hoping to stand uh, MP in the Poplar and Lime House, if your party uh, party uh, select you. So, how will you run these two jobs same time as a councillor and MP? Well, I mean, I think as Simon said, they, they very much go hand in hand, and, and I think it's actually um, very beneficial for parliamentary candidates to have either had experience as a local councillor, this is actually my second term as a councillor, um, and indeed actually to be a sitting councillor at the time, because you have those connections with the community, um, you very much know the issues that you face. As I said at that meeting last night, you know, I had about over 100 people there, um, the meeting went on for some hours, and indeed afterwards I stayed there and talked to people about issues beyond the development issue that they're facing, indeed education, um, housing, healthcare, and actually having that knowledge, um, I believe, should I be successful, of course, um, it's up to uh, the local party to make that decision later this week, but should I be successful, I'm going to be able to hit the ground running immediately um, as I'm, I'm very much in, in connection with the, with the local community and the issues that they're facing. All right. Thank you, Chris. Um, if I come back to Simon as well as... as uh, uh, sorry, before doing this, uh, I got a caller. Salaam alaikum, caller. Hello, Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yeah, my name is Shokat and I'm reading from Manchester. Can I, ask, can I ask Chris and Simon a question, please? Please. Yeah. Uh, Chris, Simon, given a decent chance, you've seen women from Bangladesh community can be MPs, a baroness, writers, a fashion designers. Now, most of Bangladeshi women are on your achievers. So what prospect for future, better prospect for future have you got for women in Bangladeshi community? Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you very much. I'm really happy to get this question, actually. I was planning to ask a quick question, uh, uh, Simon. I'm sure you, you ran uh, 2010 in, in Barking and Dagenham. And as you know, there is no Bengali background, any, any MPs in House of Parliament from Conservative Party. I think the lady, obviously, you know, the, your colleague, Mina Rahman, she's the only candidate from Bengali community and she is standing there. How can you help them? Because as you ran last time there, and obviously, it's, you can say clearly, this is a Bengali people, real, really, they're asking is it one, at least one MP from your party. How can well, you help them? Actually, it was in Barking where I got to know the Bangladeshi community, and I really treasure the memories of that time, working together to stop the British National Party and, and Nick Griffin. And what I learned again about the Bangladeshi community in Barking is, yes, they are a business-oriented community, 
very hard working, really accelerating and playing a much greater role in British public life. And of course, it's very fair to say that these things take time. If you look at other communities, other immigrant communities, for example, the Jewish community, it took yeah. 70, 80, 100 years to become established. But yeah. well, as far as I can see, and with people like me and our excellent candidate embarking, leading the way, the Bangladeshi community are making very fast progress, moving very quickly, not just in the political world, where I'm sure we'll have um, a Bangladeshi MP very soon, or Bangladeshi origin, a conservative, yeah, conservative MP, conservative, yeah. but also in the business community and, as your caller and said, in the arts and in journalism. And other sectors, Absolutely. Yeah. So this is a success story and this is growing. But I think, it's, again, it's fair to say it doesn't happen overnight. It takes right? time. But absolutely. But I, but I think we've broken through and success is now guaranteed for the future. Right, that's great. Thank you. We've got, actually, is time is biggest cons constraints, as I said you. Chris, if I ask you very quick, just 30 seconds. If your party select to run MP in Poplar Lime House, what will you do for PAME community? Um, well, I, I think, as I probably mentioned earlier, that, that one of the most direct things that I can do for the BME community, but all of the community in my ward, is to take this development fight to the next level. And we're already getting the GLA involved, we're getting the Mayor of London involved, um, and we are under very serious threat to the integrity of the entire community and the services upon which the BME community, other parts of the community, so dearly rely. So um, my view is, is not necessarily to... Um, you know, treat different parts of the community in a different way. We are one community, um, and these issues face us all. Um, and I think my role as, as, if I am selected as a parliamentary candidate, will be to take what we've already achieved and enhance it, and indeed hold Jim Fitzpatrick, the Labour MP, to account. Um, there is a growing sense that he hasn't been present at these meetings. He's not fully aware of the issues that his constituents are facing. Um, and just as we hold look for Rahman to account, it would be my intention to hold That's him to great. account. That's great, thank you. Simon, if I ask you, as, as, as I said, there are about 2,000 Bengali people, uh, Bengali voters in your area. What is your promise for the Bengali people in your constituency? I will work very hard for all my constituents. I think it's a very important point. I see Hampstead and Kilman as a unified area. It's diverse, but we all share the same values, and it's important to work hard for everybody, and I will. So, for example, I've already helped um, free school groups start new free schools. I've worked very hard to try and get as many police as possible in the area. Just like Chris said, I'm opposing planning permission, uh, uh, planning applications that I think will damage our area. It's about working really hard to improve the quality of life, improve opportunities of business and young people for everybody in our community. That's great. And I look forward to doing that. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Simon and Chris, Thank both you. of you, to come here. And uh, definitely our viewers, they enjoyed actually, they get their direct opinion from you. Shupriya Doshak, Aptar Aapan, Ramadha Shahar Thakbhan, Aapna Shunlen, actually, Ramadha Rekzan, prospective candidate. And the same time, he is already candidate in Kilvan and Hampstead. Ekhan, Aapnaar choice, how will you vote for them? As you know, everybody will come to your door. So, it's your time to write, so exercise your rights. So after that, we will be able to next program. We will be able to do this. We will be able to do this.